the sky is falling. If you listen to Met fans over the course of the weekend, wah, oh, wah, oh, wah. Good afternoon, Evan. How are you today? I Ken? see you listen to my podcast over the I weekend. I did not Thank listen you. to the podcast, <laughs> but I bet you I could have scripted it. <laughs> we don't deserve good things. What did we do wrong? Is there a curse going back to 69 or 86 or something? Where have we failed the Lord above mm -hmm. that we can't prosper and enjoy good things? Well, listen, Scherzer's not out yet for the entire season. He just may not start in the opener, which, by the way, happens to be, other than ego and the thrill of being able to say to your family sometime later in life, Daddy started the opener, it doesn't mean anything. It's a symbolic type of situation. I've mentioned that to you before. Because game two isn't less important than game Look, one. Look, the Mets won the pennant in 2015, and I bet most Mets fans don't remember who started opening day that year. Right, right. Sid Fernandez, of course, everybody knows that now. <laughs> right. No, but the point is this, like, you're getting all crazy. I am here for the crazy. It's, uh, you know, Evan knows his sports stats. I know crazy. I'm here for all of you today. Consider me your baseball therapist, if you if you allow me, Evan. By no means am I going to try to match you in uh, facts or stats. No, no, or, no, but the but problem... Because I want to be your shoulder. You're a Met fan, diehard Met fan. Your shoulder to cry on. Here's the problem with you being a therapist. Yeah. Do therapists usually laugh at their patients? Do therapists usually uh, mock their patients? You should see some of the therapists I've had. <laughs> yeah, be. some were court appointed, some I found on my own, <laughs> but I have run the gamut. <laughs> You're one of those therapists that will yeah. enjoy our struggles. You don't see that? I don't know that I'm going to enjoy your struggles. You already, I'm a New Yorker. You already are. You're well, already no. laughing about Jake being out for two months, well, about Max maybe missing yeah. a couple of stars. That's not what I'm laughing Brandon at. Brandon Nimmo's neck hurts oh, again. Yeah, I mean, he's what got else a stiff new? neck. He may miss the opener, too. I am not laughing at that because I would never laugh at injury because I'm not that guy. What I'm getting joy of is the reaction to that. Like, I feel terrible for Jacob DeGrom. He's a good guy. Mm -hmm. He's a great pitcher. I feel bad. That Max Scherzer may not be ready for opening day. You know I love Brandon Nimmo. It hurts me that Brandon Nimmo's got a sore neck and he may be out for opening day. But I love the reaction. Like, I could sit back, eat some popcorn that Jerry Recco got me from the garden. Thank you, MSG. It's in my office right now. And I could just sit back and listen. And it, I, I, I do get Do you joy. know why we react that way? Because... Every time you think you have something good happening mm -hmm. and you're going to win, something out of left field comes in and knocks you off that perch. Yeah. I feel you, Evan. And injuries are the kind of thing in sports that can derail everything. Brandon Nimmo, and I like Brandon Nimmo. Brandon Nimmo has played 100 games in a season how many times, Craig? Oh, not a lot. One time in yeah. his career. Yeah. One time. That's why the best thing that happened to the Mets this weekend is they didn't make that dopey trade with the Padres that was rumored where they were going to trade Dominic Smith for Chris Paddock and Eric Hosmer. Thank God they didn't make that trade. They need Dominic Smith. And you want to know why? They need Dominic Smith because guys get hurt. Yeah. Because Robinson Cano is 39 years old coming off a steroid suspension. You need depth. I'm still excited about this season. I still am confident about this season. Yeah. But you have to admit... When your ace pitcher, who you haven't seen pitch since July of last year, is out for two months, and your big free agent sign, he's already dealing with a nagging injury, and your center fielder, yes, he's going to be your center fielder, is already facing some kind of injury, yeah. and injuries have been the biggest impediment to his career, it's tough not to see all that stuff and say, boy, nothing's changed, has it? Yeah, it's been a weird like little change over the weekend. Not the Yankee fans are all of a sudden cocky, because the Yankee fan hasn't witnessed the Yankees really do much of anything as far as you know, the acquisition of players, but there seems like there's been a legitimate change where Yankee fans uh, you know, are still upset with the offseason, but uh, even Big Mac said off the air today, I think we're going to come out and kill it. Met fans went from Thursday afternoon, hey, we are the team to beat, to Friday's news about DeGrom and your exclusive report <laughs> about Max Scherzer's hamstring that John Heyman stole from you, Welcome to my world. I feel you. Uh, going from, oh, my God, we're going to win it all, to, oh, my God, we may not even make the postseason. Well, it, dude, it's concerning. It's crazy. It's concerning because yeah. the, the uh -huh. thing about the Mets that will be different or special is that they've got the two best pitchers in the sport on paper on their roster. 
And so it's a great theory. Jacob DeGrom and Max Scherzer. It's Randy Johnson and Kurt Schilling. The problem is Jake's had an injury history the last couple of years, and Max is in his late 30s. Yeah. So the thing that could derail that is this. Yep. Is what we're witnessing I, well, now. I'm witnessing I it, get yeah. it. The Max thing for now is minor. Right? Yeah, that and he has, said he has had this exact thing previously. Sure. It usually clears up in a couple days. And I trust him, okay. but he's in his late 30s. Yeah. So the thing that can derail what we're all so excited about, the thing that makes the Mets different than every other team in baseball, is Max Scherzer and Jacob deGrom. That's the thing they sure. have. It's certainly not their bullpen. It's certainly not their lineup. It's Jacob deGrom and Max Scherzer. And right out of the gate, you're without Jake for two months, and it's just a reminder that as good as Max is, and I have no regrets about the signing, he's in his late 30s. When yep. you get older, Craig, you know this because you're old. What happens to your body? Well, it starts breaking down on you. Exactly. And the little things that your mind thinks it can do, your body no longer can do. Uh, so we got that for you. The other big story is uh, this Carlos Bel- Beltran nonsense. Carlos Beltran's going to be part of the Yes broadcast this season. Um, and he did an interview. On yes, of course, uh, friendly confines. Those going to ask all that, you know, tough, uh, hard hitting questions of you. But Carlos Beltran still doesn't get it. He thinks he's the only guy being penalized publicly by the Astros cheating scandal. And I heard some of it where, uh, you know, he blames everybody but himself and the Astros. And he actually had the balls to say, we thought everybody was coming into Houston cheating, so we decided we would cheat. And no one told us to stop because if they had, we would have stopped right away. Like, dude, if you're going to do an interview and you want to go out there so you can put it all behind you because you have future plans to manage possibly, Mm -hmm. which we know he does, and now you're going to be part of the broadcast, which is why he did this sit-down with Yes, because it's going to be on Yes, and you do have to address it because people haven't heard from you yet publicly in that kind of setting. And you have a friendly interviewer asking you the questions for obvious reasons. You either tell the truth or don't, right? But don't give me the nonsense of only Carlos Beltran is being blamed. Nobody else is being blamed for this. I'm the only guy. And you talk about yourself in the third person. And you hear the boy. He actually said this, Evan. He said, if someone had told us to stop, we would have stopped. Here's the problem. Oh, come on. There's a report. I know it's been a year. And I feel bad ripping Michael K because, you know, I don't want it to come across like I'm ripping him out of a biasness because he's against us. I'm saying this because it generally pissed me off as a as someone that followed the story. Right. There was a report in The Athletic about a year and a half ago that Brian McCann, we'll talk specifics, went up to Carlos Beltran and told him to stop. That Carlos Beltran was pressuring other players to right. cheat. That Carlos Beltran was the ringleader. Yep. Can you ask him about that? Because he was Carlos not asked about Beltran it. made it seem as if, and I thought you eloquently put it, if someone would have told us to stop, right. we would have stopped. Well, there's a report that a veteran teammate... Told you to stop. And then his other excuse was the way the Houston dugout is set up, the video room is not next to the dugout as it is in a lot of stadiums. Their video room was somewhere else, so they had to do something to get video into the clubhouse to see things because other teams had it. Like, what? If you are a Yankee fan who's still bothered by the Astros stuff and you want answers from one guy that hasn't given any answers because he hasn't done an interview yet, If you're genuinely still pissed about the Astros cheating, you should be very upset with the guy who's going to call a bunch of your games because he lied to you. Or he didn't get into specifics on what happened. Carlos Beltran is accused of being the ringleader of this. Correct. There is a difference, Craig, between, hey, everyone was doing it. Okay, let's do it. And being the ringleader. Now, yes, there's a degree where I feel bad for Carlos Beltran. He was the one name mentioned, and he's the one guy who has served a severe punishment. Alex Cora is managing again. A.J. Hinch is managing again. And all the players are playing. So I get that. But Carlos Beltran at some point has to answer questions. And quite frankly, he didn't do it in this interview. You were the ringleader, Carlos. You weren't some innocent victim. So explain to the Yankee fans if you guys still care. If you don't, okay. Aaron Judge used to care. He don't care anymore. He says he no longer has to answer questions. Okay. Why is that? Oh, because he now works for the family. That's all that's going on here. So anyway, I did see it. I want to acknowledge it. We'll get into that with you if you're a diehard Yankee fan. Number to join, 877-337-6666. Good news. At 3 o'clock today exactly, 
we're going to we're going to be giving away a pair of field level tickets for the Yankees Blue Jays game on Thursday, April fourteenth. It's part of a new three o'clock thing that we're doing here. I think we do it every day, but I honestly don't really know. Every day this week at exactly three o'clock, we are going to be giving away, courtesy of our friends at Jersey Mike's, a pair of field level tickets. For Yankees games, a whole variety of Yankee games, but it's going to happen exactly at 3 o'clock every single day. So, if you want to have great seats to a Yankee game this season, you know the exclusive place to do that is right here on the fan at 3 o'clock every single afternoon. I think we also do it in the morning and middays, but I have no idea what time they do it, nor is is it really any of my business. (laughs) Yeah, So, I don't care. I care what happens at 3 o'clock, and that's about it, really. We'll get all your calls coming up. Andrew's in Scarsdale. Andrew, what's going on with you today, Cookie? What is up? What is up? I mean, is DeGrom essentially done as a power pitcher? So he wasn't going to be able to throw 102 in the seventh forever, but because he essentially hasn't been able to stay healthy the past couple of years, does he have to start – that transition. Well, as Evan will tell you, before he was throwing 102, he was a dominant pitcher at about 98. I thought in the two spring training starts he made, we were starting to see that adjustment. His velocity was down. Now, it was still high, but it was down compared to what it was. Here's what the new Jacob deGrom is, and it pains me to say it. The new Jacob deGrom is a guy you can't rely on to make 30 starts. That's what he is. So when the New York Mets, hopefully the New York Mets, want to pay him at the end of this season, because he probably will opt out injury or not, what we have to keep in mind is that Jacob deGrom is just not someone you can rely on to make 30-plus starts. That's the way I view Jake now. I think we have seen, and I've defended him a lot because I think we have to look at his career history. 14, he was reliable. 15, he was reliable. Had an injury in 16, 17, 18, 19, all reliable. But now we're looking at a couple of years of a guy that has so many different things wrong with him. And as he gets older, that's the reality we have to face. You can't trust Jacob DeGrom to make 30 starts. Well, if you're a diehard Met fan, I want to hear from you right now. Are you panicked? Is the season over? Is the sky falling? Or do you have the same level of confidence you had prior to the Scherzer and DeGrom injuries? And you Yankee fans, do you even want Carlos Beltran to be a part of your broadcast because of the cheating scandal in Houston? Have you gotten over it yet? Or do you not give a rat's ass if he does the game great? And if he doesn't do the game, you don't care about that either. Plus, Daniel Jones has spoken. I will tell you what he said coming up in a bit right here on The Fan. Hope you had a great weekend and have a good time with us to start off a new week. Coming to you live from the Town Fair Tire Studios. 